Whistler has become an international destination for many years, but the Winter Olympics in 2010 is going to go crazy. Welcoming customers from all over the world. Yeah, sure. Behind me are three domes. Under the domes, there are three cuisines from around the world. Each of you will be expected to make and match that cuisine. Yes, yes chef. chef. Ladies first. China. China. Good. I love Chinese food. It's delicious. I can do something creative with this. China. Excellent. Dave, come over. I'll take this one. I don't know Indian food. <laughs> Indian food. Why? India. <sighs> OK. I've never made an Indian dish in my life. Don't be intimidated, Dave, by Indian cuisine. <sighs> OK, Kevin, off we go. Show me what you got. Mexico. Mexico. It doesn't get any easier than this. I think everybody on the planet has cooked Mexican food. I totally got this in the bag. Fantastic. <laughs> I'm just going to pick a dish that I know how to make, and I'm going to put an Indian flair or Indian twist. I don't know. I, I don't have no, I, I don't know what I'm doing. I, I'm just pretending. Ah. I'm going to cook orange and cumin marinated pork tenderloin with a tequila vinaigrette and a nice mole sauce. Had a little bit of spice in it, and it's going to take the dish over the edge. I'm making a lychee marinated duck breast on top of the Chinese noodles. I definitely want to kick up this Chinese food today. I have to prove I'm better than Dave and Kevin. OK, half an hour to go, yes? Yes, chef. 15 minutes into the competition, Kevin and Ariel have already begun preparing their dishes. Dave, however... Are these the only proteins we're allowed to work with? I have no idea. ...still hasn't decided what to make. The main goal right now is to cook whatever animal India doesn't worship. If I put the wrong animal on the plate, it's going to be like sacrilege, and I'm instant screwed. Fish, chicken, beef, pork. I'm going pork. What are you protein? What are you using? Pork. Pork. I was going to use beef, and then I thought I remembered something. OK, let's start off with China, Eddie, shall we? Tell me. Ariel, please. I was so nervous, like, unbelievably nervous, more nervous than I've ever been. This is a, a um, there's a, Basically, I wanted to do like a noodle dish in a broth, and the duck was marinated in a um, in a lychee um, lychee plum marinade. Mm -hmm. um, so, have you worked on Chinese dishes before? I've, I mean, I order Chinese food all the time, but it's actually been a while since I've had Chinese takeout. It's very intense having to have those three chefs and Chef Ramsay all taste your dish. It's like, oh, God, I hope I don't get torn apart right now. How was that for you, Thomas? You know what? It, uh, it just didn't seem too balanced. <laughs> How was that for you? I enjoy the sweetness. Mm -hmm. It's very interesting. It's a good try, you know, but the sauce is too watery. Thank you. I'm disappointed. This dish was definitely not a personal best for me. But it's not over yet. I could still win this. OK. Kevin, bring on Mexico. Kevin definitely has an advantage. Mexican food is very common, and I'm sure he nailed it. OK, please explain to our judges what exactly you've done. I did a orange and cumin uh, lightly marinated pork tenderloin and a mole and Mexican chocolate sauce. What's the sauce? Oh, man. Kevin, please. Well, I'm not going to lie to you. I did forget I had a, uh, a mole and Mexican chocolate sauce that I... You forgot the sauce? The one thing that I made that I truly loved that I thought would bring the dish together, I forgot. I think that's what it was missing, like a, a very rich Mexican-style sauce. I think with that, I think it really would have put it over the top. Yeah, damn, what a shame. The first judge didn't really buy my dish, but I got two more judges to go, so, you know, I'm keeping out hope. Eddie, how was that for you, please? It's good. I love it. <laughs> Mangoes was an interesting combination for me, too. Good. Thank you. Very interesting indeed. Even though I forgot the sauce, two out of the three liked it. I'm still in this. Right, next. 
India. Dave. I'm definitely intimidated. I'm being judged by a master Indian chef. I'm really nervous. OK. Now, I've never worked with Indian food before. This is my first go at it. So what I have here is ming bean puree and a seared pork tenderloin. And why did you choose pork? I believe that in India, cow is worshipped, so I went with pork. <laughs> Maybe I'm wrong. Vegas? No, um, pork is also not a very important dish in Indian cuisine Isn't because it's a lot, lot of Muslims which live in India. So my protein choice would probably not be served. Chicken, oh. seafood. Oh my god, why did I pick pork? Right off the bat, my protein screwed me. Respecting the cuisine and the people, I would have gone a little safer with that. Well, I definitely do respect the people, and that's why I avoided beef, but now I know to avoid pork as well. Um, Thomas? I thought the, for not having worked with these spices, it mm -hmm. actually blended very well together. Thank you. Eddie, please. Uh, it tastes really good. You know. mm -hmm. Thank you, yeah. Chef. So, Vikas, any final thoughts on the dish? The lentils were done very creatively. Yep, yep. First try, amazing. <laughs> That's very good. Yeah, I can't believe it. They actually liked my dish, and I am so relieved right now. Excellent. Now it's time to decide who wins the challenge. Is it Dave's Indian, Ariel's Chinese, or is it Kevin's Mexican dish? I'll be picked uh, Indian. Thank you, chef. Thomas, which one would it be? You know what? I, I would have. I would have loved to have tried the mole on that dish. I think it would have really brought it together. But because you didn't have that mole on there, I'd have to go with Dave. That was very nice. Thank you, chef. Yeah. Indian cooking. It's very intimidating. And doing it first time, you have to give them full credit. That was a dish I'll go for. Damn. 3-0. Everyone. Yeah, well done, Dave. There's one cuisine that I have come to love in a big way. It's something that we've never focused on here in Hell's Kitchen ever before. That cuisine is Mexican. Yeah. Amazing. I'm fired up. I love Mexican food. I cook Mexican food all the time. I eat Mexican food all the time. This is my strength. We're winning. Scott, get your big ass in here. Let's go. Yeah, dude, pinata. Oh, well. That's a big donkey. <laughs> now that's a pinata. Wow. I definitely want to take a whack at Chef Scott's ass. So, for today's challenge, You'll be turning five Mexican classics into fine dining food. In a moment, these balls are going to be scattered everywhere. Each of them has a different ingredient on them. Listen carefully. Each team has 90 seconds to grab a maximum of 25 balls. And you split those ingredients to make five stunning dishes. On your marks. Get set. I did not expect 40 gazillion balls to fall from the ceiling and bounce all over the place. Balls are literally everywhere. Everybody ready? All seven chefs will cook a dish, but each team must choose which five they will present to Chef Ramsay for judging. What kind of tacos are you doing, Brian? Shrimp with th two sauces. I know how to put together a beautiful Mexican plate. My dish is sexy. It's simple, it's beautiful, and it melts, and it's pure ecstasy. That's what I'm all about. I'm about simplicity and sex. Motherfucker. Start well, deciding which one you're serving and which one you're dropping. In the red kitchen. Yeah, that's good. What, this looks great. The women quickly decide which dishes to present to Chef Ramsay. All right, we're fucking ready to rock and roll over here. But over in the blue kitchen. Which dish are you dropping? They're struggling to choose between Royce and Brian's tacos. Pat, you got to make a decision here. And they've decided to give Patrick the final vote. 10 seconds left. Which one tasted better? Hurry up. Guys, I'm going with Royce's. Sit. You gotta be fucking kidding me, man. It's a bad call. First up, in the Mexican Fine Dining Challenge, Royce and Kimmy will go head to head. Let's start off with um, Royce. I uh, thought traditional pork tacos. I also have a smoked pimentone potatoes. The one thing that doesn't attract me is the greasiness of the tortilla. I agree with Thomas. Kimmy. Um, I made a shrimp fajita taco. Why did you choose a flour tortilla over a corn tortilla? 
I'm from Memphis, so we eat a lot of flour stuff. The abundance of vegetables and the variety that you put on these tacos, they look very appetizing. Mm -hmm. I mean, the flavors are very strong. I'm gonna have to go with uh, the red team on this one. Red team? Chum? I agree, red team. My tacos were beautiful, vibrant, fresh. As certain as this is my right hand, Kimmy would not have beaten me. Let's go, Clemenza. Danielle, please explain the dish to our guests. I went with the New York strip. I grilled that. That's kind of falling apart. Do you roll it tightly? It's a little hard to eat. Clemenza, please present the dish. We have kind of a Mexican-Italian burrito. I got the two cheeses, provolone and mozzarella, with a uh, pork and chicken, and uh, I just kind of tried to make everything work together. I've always found that Mexican food and Italian food are, are compadres. That's a great idea. Thank you. I like that you that you thought out of the box. Uh, I'm going to go with the blue team on this one. John. I agree, blue team. Excellent. Good job, Clemenza. It's the round of the tostada. Let's go. Oh, so they, Come on, Roche. Yeah, yeah. We got a shot to actually win this. I'm stoked. We're tied up. Roshni's up against the former team. Wouldn't it be something if Roshni were to pull off the win for the blue team? OK, um, Dana. I did a seared ahi tuna tostada. Nice idea, the watermelon and the mango. Thank you, chef. I like the way the tuna went with the, uh, the little bite of the jicama, the watermelon. Come on, Dana. We can pull this point off, and we can win this. Let's do this. Good job. Thank you, chef. Pretty good. Rushi, please yes, present your dish. I went with a grilled tostada with a chili crab filling. I brought my roots into a little bit. I roasted off coriander seed first. Thomas, what do you think? I love the flavor of the coriander and the spice at the Thank back of the end. It's very nice. Thank you, chef. I'm going to have to go with the blue team. Blue team. I really like that vibrant flavor in my mouth. Um, the salsa is the best salsa that I had here today. Thank you, chef but the red team created the best overall fresh dish. Red team. Wow. Two very well thought out dishes. Oh, fuck. Now we're at a draw. What happens now? And um, gents, we're faced with a tough decision. Well done. Thank you, Chef. Both back in line. Now, it's up to Chef Ramsay to break the tie between Dana and her former teammate, Roshni. Oh, come on, come on, come on. I'm staring at Chef Ramsay, trying to use the Jedi powers of blue, 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 blue. Blue, 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 blue. Congratulations. Red team. Woo! Yeah! You can probably guess from the decor. Your next challenge, we're going to be working with Chinese food. I'm from the hood. I like Chinese food. We got a Chinese store every other block. Chinese store on 10th. Chinese store on 11th. Chinese store on 21st. 30th Street, 40th Street, 52nd Street, 56th Street. I know a little bit about Chinese food. Each team will create their version of six stunning traditional Chinese dishes. Chow mein, spring rolls, dumplings, Chinese soup, classic fried rice, and finally, stir fry. I lived in Asia for a year, so I'm gonna nail it. This is my competition now. While the ladies find their ingredients underwhelming, the men Woo, let's go, guys. Let's do it. are overwhelmingly confident. Come on, guys, I wanna win. I'm gonna see my boys back in the blue. Hell yeah. But there is one exception. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie, I've never made a chow mein, guys. Basically, it's like making a stir fry, man. You put all your noodles, you just toss, toss, toss. Okay. I'm looking at my ingredients, and I don't even know what to do with this stuff. How do you cook Chinese food? Those are, uh, Daikon, right? The, is it? I never had. I'm not gonna lie. Ah, yes, daikon radish, something I cook with all the time. Ah, oh, what the fuck? Uh. I'm getting my jacket back right now. Because I lived in Asia for a year. What do you eat while you live in Asia for a year? Asian food. Let's go, Jack, explain to Chef. OK, we have a firm tofu with a little bit of chili pepper, scallions, rice wine vinegar, and bean sprouts. This is the first time I've ever tasted fried rice use rice vinegar. Mm -hmm. It works, though, Chef, doesn't it? It works. Mm -hmm. Dan, let's go. Fried rice with mushrooms. I also use a little bit of coconut milk and loosely crushed peanuts and some sweet and spicy glazed prawns. Mm. Presentation. That's great. Thank you, Chef. The rice a little bit undercooked. Chinese rice should never be undercooked. 
Dan, is that how they serve the rice in Asia where you lived there for a year? Which one do you prefer? I prefer the flavor and the imagination and the creativity of Ready. Hey, Dan, go back to Asia for another year. Uh, right, next up, the stir fry. Let's go. This is my stir fry here. Wheat noodles, or sea scallops, also with a little marin soy, sesame oil. It's very difficult not to overcook this. So if you don't overcook this, you ruin it. Mudoking means amazing, not overcooked. Good. Very good. good. Thank you, Sean. Very good. Thank you, Sean. Well done, John. Good job. My dish is more of an appetizer dish. I mean, it looks a very weird stir-fry. Yeah. This is supposed to be a stir-fry, but you serve it differently. I didn't have a lot of uh, components to work with, so... I don't want you to make an excuse in front of the chef, please. He's given up his day to be here. Jessica, what is wrong with you? Take responsibility for that. Which one do you prefer? I will give uh, the blue team. Blue team. Good. All right, we got a point. A point is a point is a point. Down okay. to the chow mein. Let's go, Susie. Come on, Susie. Bring it home, Susie. Five and Let's home. go. Susan, explain your chow mein yes, to chef. chef, please. I have rice noodle. a rice noodle with a pork that I did a quick marinade on, and I threw in some crushed cashews. I like the flavor. The bean smell gives a really nice, wonderful texture, yeah. but I prefer to have a little bit more color contrast. Green onion it would really, really perk it up. OK, Anthony, please, let's go. Just I made a very simple wheat and rice noodle chow mein with daikon radish, and it's topped with candy ginger. Very interesting combination. I like the texture, contrast, and this is a very good chow mein dish. Oh my god, he is complimenting my dish. We're tied right now, and it's all down to the chow mein. Please see blue team wins. Oh, come on, blue team, blue team. Tough one now, because your decision is going to decide which team wins. I'm not worried. I definitely think we have this one in the bag. I hope Chef Gordon also agree with me. I will give this a blue team. Thank you, Chef. Yeah. Thank you, Chef. Yahtzee, baby. <laughs> That's awesome. What is the one place in the world that you'd like to go to? Brian. Uh, Holland, Chef. Seriously? Yeah. They have coffee shops, red light districts, different things, you know, that a chef really enjoy. As a chef, traveling is a real opportunity to try all types of combinations of flavors. One of the ethnic foods that I fell in love with is Indian cuisine. Morning. Morning. My kids ain't gonna believe this, but I seen real life Aladdin characters. OK, I see you, brother. Go ahead. Our amazing Bollywood dancers. Great job. Thank you so much. Wasn't that great? Yes. 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 Now, for your next challenge, you'll be combining ingredients to create four Indian-inspired dishes. Pork, lamb, chicken, and one cod dish. With the ingredients selected, the chefs get to work on the dishes they've designed. I already got the pistachios and the basmati rice. So I've got a mango powder crusted lamb. You know what you're doing? Yeah, I'm going to do a soup. But one member of the red team. Oh, what's the problem? I have no idea what the fuck I'm doing. Doesn't know where in the world to begin. This is not my forte. I have no idea what Indian cuisine is. I've never tasted Indian food. What the hell? No fucking clue. All I know is I'm going to have rice on the bottom of my plate, and I need something to go over top of it. Can you taste, girl? I can't right now. We have a pan sear pork with cumin uh, and turmeric. Hey, give me something for the yogurt. What spice? I've spent about eight months doing Indian-inspired kind of cuisine. I've worked with all of these different spices before, so I know what I'm doing. Spice? Yeah, for the Curry, yogurt. Curry, turmeric, fenugreek. No, 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 uh, for, the, for the yogurt. We don't have deal. Coriander. No. Aaron is saying that he worked for an Indian chef, and he kind of like knows where to go. But Aaron, you don't know what the fuck is going on. Let's start off with the lamb, please. Let's go. Latasha and Aaron. There's no problem beating the first one up. I've got my background, and I'm feeling pretty confident in my dish. Aaron, please describe your dish to Chef. So having studied a little bit of Indian food, I did a date chutney inside of the phyllo. I mean, I've never put uh, chutney inside a phyllo paste. I know. The uh, lamb has mango powder. That's good. Little Damn. seed on the dates. Oh, I fucking missed a seed. 
The lamb is cooked very nice. Bizarre, the old uh, chutney inside filo pastry. Very bizarre. Uh, Latasha. I've prepared uh, seared lamb with a sweet pea and mint puree. Uh, lamb's delicious. It's very, very good. But the okra, it's undercooked. But otherwise, the other flavors are really, really good. Thank you, Chef. Let's call Aaron first. Chef, out of five. I would give him three. Aaron, a two. Crap. And Latasha, I'm going to give yours a three. A good four, I would say. Thank you. Thank you. Nice. Thank, Thank you. you. Now it's up to Bryant, Indian-inspired cod, to maintain the blue team's lead. Basically, a dry rub cod and some champagne vinegar. Where in the fuck did you see that in India? I think it is not pleasant. But his dish misses the mark, which gives Ro a chance to put the red team ahead with her phyllo-wrapped cod. The phyllo place is wet. Yeah. It's like eating a mouthful yeah. of wet tissue. But she also underwhelms. Three, I guess. Two. And the blue team's margin is now just one point. Blue, you have a slight lead. Yeah. 16 to 15. Come Next up, the battle of the port. Let's go. You got this, Jim. Going into the final round, it's Jennifer versus Fernando. I feel completely ashamed that a Michelin rated Indian chef, he's about to eat whatever the hell I just put on my plate. Jennifer. I marinated the pork with coconut milk and tamarind. Underneath, you have a basmati rice with clove, star anise, and curry leaves. Did you taste your, your dish? Oh, my god. Pork's delicious. It's very good, actually. Really? It's a very tasty dish. It's pretty flawless. Um, I, I really could just collapse right now. Um, very, very nice dish. Yeah, good job. Yeah. Uh, Fernando. Chef, this is a pan-roasted uh, pork loin with uh, turmeric and cumin. And then you have on the bottom is uh, braised garbanzo beans. Oof, it's hot. So hoping the yogurt will counterbalance the, the heat. Pork is cooked very nicely, but uh, the flavors are slightly muted. There is a huge push from the green chilies. Spices to be blended down a peg. Fernando, four out of five. Chef Fernando's pork dish. I would give it the three. Blue team, eight point lead. Jennifer's out of five, please. It's a solid four. Oh, red team, we need this win, we need this win. It's tough, very tough. Yeah, solid four, good job. Good job, Jen. Good job, Jen. Good job, Jen. Good job, Jen. Good job. Absolutely, nice. good work, good work, good thank job. you. Oh my god, both teams are tied now. I am seriously gonna lose my mind if I don't get out of here. Red team, blue team. We have a tie. The highest scoring dish breaks the tie. One chef scored eight out of 10 and has won it for her team. Congratulations. Jennifer, yes. red team, yeah. well done. Yes. Jennifer. <laughs> Hoorah for Jennifer. Eight out of 10, eight out of 10. Chef. One of the places that I really enjoyed visiting is a country that's been at the forefront of philosophy, oh. art, architecture, and even cuisine. The country that I'm talking about is Greece. I love Greek dancers. Every year growing up, we would always go to the Greek festival. So fun. I wanted to go out and join them. Look at their shoes. Work it. Not really my style. You know, I'll leave my shoulder to shoulder dancing at bar mitzvahs when I'm doing the horror with my family. Double cream. While the chefs may use only the ingredients they put on their board. Determine which ingredients suits your dish. Yes, chef. They do not have to use all of them. Randy, what do you got going on? I'm trying to figure it out. I just tried to put stuff together how, how I would want it. I didn't necessarily know how the Greeks would want it. I just put it how Randy would want it. Dude, you are out of control, Randy. I, mean, I can't work next to him. He's a mess. Just under 25 minutes to go, yes? Yes, chef. yes chef. Hello, guys. I got some really weird ingredients. Like, I got eggplant, frisé, kiwi. Kiwis are making my hands itchy. I really don't think eggplant goes well with prawns, so I'm definitely dropping the eggplant, of course. Some nice kiwi. Chef, I have a tahini marinated lamb and a filling of Greek yogurt. Uh, visually, it's got impact. It does but it's just a tad overcooked to me. What a shame. If you were to score that out of five, what would you give it? I'm going to say three. Yes, Chef, thank you. I'm going to give it a three. Yep. Middle of the road, what a shame. Uh, Josh, please. So I have a uh, seared lamb with a uh, tricolored couscous, candied orange, 
and apple. What is the liquid? That is blood, Chef. Hell no. It looked like a, you know, lamb blood soup. Was that done on purpose? No, Chef, it was not. I mean, the lamb hasn't rested properly. It looks like a dog's chewed it. It's a mess. I wouldn't serve this dish. This is a, this is a one. A one. One as well. I'm in a slump right now. It's uh, two not great performances in a row. Six to two. I'm just going to have to step it up if I want to stay here. Uh, next up, prawns. Please, give me some delight. With the men already trailing by four points, Brett hopes to bring his team back with his Greek-styled grilled prawns. To be honest with you, it was yeah. a wonderful dish. Thank you. Um, cooked beautifully. I'm going to say four. Thank four. you. Uh, I agree. Well done. Uh, eight out of ten. Uh, Michelle. And now Michelle hopes that her unusual combination of ingredients will come together to wow the judges. Something really weird about frizzé and cream. I mean, this is it's just not Greek. Have you ever seen a, a kiwi in Greece before? No, Chef. No. I didn't think so. No. Uh, chef. That's a one for sure. A one. I'm going to give it a two. Thank you. Kiwi and frisé. Your plan was doomed from the start, Michelle. For his first ever Greek dish, Randy has made pan-seared chicken with eggplant and new potatoes. I am a little nervous. Don't spit it out. Don't spit it out, please. Um. I don't think you can get any more Greek than this on yeah. a plate. I just keep tasting home. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's what I keep tasting. Yeah. Delicious. Yeah. Chef, let's go. That's a five. Thank you, Delicious. Chef. Five. Yes! Yeah, Randy. Yeah, Thank buddy. you, Chef. That means a lot. Woo! Nice job. Who buddy. is this guy? <laughs> Country bunkin' ass Randy killing it. That's what the fuck I'm talking about. Adam's seared pork with basmati rice. I think that's one of the best dishes you've cooked so far in this competition. Thank you so much. much. Also impresses. I gotta give you a five, man. Yes. Thank you, Chef. Five. Yes. yes. Great job. Thank it's you, really Chef. Really great job. Uh, two very good dishes. Well Thank done. you, Chefs. Good job, man. Helping the men to maintain their lead going into the final round. 36 33. Last one. Come on, Nick. Now, it all comes down to Nick, Sarah, and their Greek take on swordfish. It's all up to me at this point. If I lose this, I would let my team down so much. It's a lot of pressure. Sarah, describe your dish. Um, it has Romano and garbanzo beans with feta and capers. It really looks beautiful. But the swordfish, I think, really is under-seasoned. I was expecting more. Okay. I'm going to say three here. Decent. Visually, I, I like that level of finesse. Um, four. Thank you, chef. Four out of five. Good. Uh, Nick. We're only down by four. Nick's the last one to go. He's got to pull this one out for us. I have a grilled swordfish that I marinated in fresh oregano, olive oil, salt, pepper, and garlic. This immediately brings me to home. But it truthfully, unfortunately, is just way over. My heart dropped to my scrotum. We're not losing this fucking challenge. Uh, I'll give it a two, because it's not catastrophic, but it's not good. Tough decision. I'm sweating in places I shouldn't be sweating. We can't lose this competition. Um, I'm going to say three. Yes! Yes! yes. yes. You do. <laughs> As I was saying, each team will have to produce four amazing dishes. A taco, tostada, enchilada, and then finally, a chili relleno. Understood? Yes, yes chef. chef. I know a lot, but... Uh, I don't have much Mexican food experience. Aprons, aprons. My grandmother is an amazing cook. It kind of comes second nature. Take your knife, and you're going to go all the way around. Take the back of your knife. See how this pops oh. right off? And this is what my, my bread and butter is. So it's definitely one that's, uh, <laughs> this is definitely one that I'm going I'm to win for you, Grandma, for sure. <laughs> Four, three, two, one. Let's go, blue team. Aprons on, let's go. I hope Hell's Kitchen is ready because I'm coming with these enchiladas and it's going to blow everyone away. Sorry, guys. Are we breading these? Mm, that's just flour. Cody says he's the baller with the uh, Mexican. I believe him. I let him take lead. Happy days, man. Happy days. 20 minutes, yes? 20 minutes. That's your marinade? Yeah. It's all done? It's, it's almost there. Taste it. So I'm going through all the technique in my mind, make sure I'm seasoning, I'm layering my flavors. I'm focused on executing this duck to perfection. Amber is spending 40 minutes to make a salad. We need two per plate. 
What do you mean, two per plate? We're doing three. I told you I don't do even numbers on a plate. Remember, sometimes less is more. Mark and I, match made in heaven, for sure. I need six tostada pieces two. all day. I'm not doing two. I'm not doing two. We got about three minutes, guys. Come on. Y'all need to be playing. If not, we are fucked. Oh, I need those lights off the grill. Go, 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 go. 15 seconds to go. Yes, chef. Put on the pass, girls. Josh, Josh, fuck. I got you. Five, four, go, go, three, go, go, go. two, one, and serve. Well done. Yes. Fuck yes. Good. Now, I will not be judging them. I brought in a very special guest judge. He is the chef and owner of famed Mexican restaurant Johnny Sanchez in New Orleans. Please welcome my fellow judge on MasterChef, Aaron Sanchez. Yeah. Yeah. Welcome. Oh my God, Aron Sanchez, I love this man. He is an amazing chef, and it's such an honor to be able to have him taste my food. Welcome to Hell's Kitchen. Let's start off with the enchilada dishes first, please. Cori is from Mexico. She speaks Mexican, and I'm from Milwaukee with a red beard and tattoos. I'm the farthest thing from a fucking enchilada, but I know I got this. Right, uh, Adam, why yes. don't you describe what dishes first, please? Uh, just marinate a little flank steak. I use that on the left. I also put it inside of the enchilada with a little cojita and onion. Chef, how do they look? I think it looks fantastic. Yeah. Dig in. I got to say, for me, I think this is such a beautiful example of where Mexican food is going. And uh, I got to say, the flavors are not muddled. The dish shows great individual character. Thank you. And what you've done is kept that essence of street food, but elevated. It's a really good start. Yeah, absolutely. Right, Cory. Aaron Sanchez, first, un placer. Gracias. Igualmente, gracias. Um, so I made enchiladas de puerco, and then I made a green mole to go with it. As much as it pains me to say, um, Cory, look, here's the deal. You can look at it, and visually, it, there's, some, there's some real issues with it. Some of the colors are very muted. It's a lot of green, a lot of brown. There's way too much cheese. The tortillas are opening up. They're kind of breaking up a little bit. I hope it delivers with flavor. The mole is beautiful. But this is the wrong application for the filling. That's interesting. Um, Chef Aron, um, is it a point each? Is it a point to the blue team, a point to the red team? I'm going to have to give a point to the blue team. Yes, yeah, Chef. Come on. I'm super disappointed and I'm super upset. This is definitely gonna take a while to get over. Battle of the taco. Right, let's start with the red team first. So today we have a braised chicken taco. And we have a jicama and whole grain mustard slaw. Me and Nicole kicked ass on them tacos. We're feeling good. You took the time with the, with the jicama, with the pickled onion, the braised is there all the way. I think it's very thought out and I like that. With a strong showing from Cyan and Nikki, it's now time to taste Peter and Josh's tacos filled with a pork barbacoa cooked perfectly medium. I get the idea of trying to make them smaller and a little bit more sophisticated in appearance, but uh, it's actually doing you a disservice. The point goes to the red team. The red yeah. team, ladies, congratulations. Tally it up, baby. Moving on. Next up the Battle of the Tostada. Mark and Amber are facing off against Jordan and Lauren's steak tostada. I love the fact that you were able to stay true to the ingredients. It's very authentic. Now, Amber and Mark try to prove they are a step above with their molasses soy marinated duck tostada. And Amber here made a beautiful salad to accompany. Peppers, tomatoes, and radish on the inside of that salad. Everything there is cooked properly. It's delicious. But the thing is, I have such reservations with green bell peppers. They don't have any inherent flavor. They're bland. The salad, the acidity, delicious. Peppers are no no. Hold on, is it the uh, blue team or the red team? I'm gonna give both of them a point. Wow. Thank you, Chef. Well done. Chef. Duck is cooked too good. I would have never heard the end of it from Mark if we didn't get that point. Next time, trust me. Whoa, 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 homie, no, slow your roll. No, no, I'm not having this conversation with you right now. And I'm still never gonna hear the end of it, even though we got the point. I'm not talking to you about this anymore? No, please stop talking to me. It's tied at 2 2. It comes down to the final dish, the battle of the chili relleno. Declan and Cody are hoping to stop Mary Lou and Corey's second shot at impressing Chef Sanchez with their braised chicken chili relleno. This is frustrating, gentlemen. And the traditional way of, of making the batter is by beating egg whites, brushing it with flour, and then dipping them. This is like panko crusted. It looks more like a fried avocado than a chili relleno. We're looking for that elevated authenticity. 
Ladies, please describe your dish. What we have in front of you is gonna be a ducky nopales chile relleno. Visually, I just think I, I love the idea of it, the Anaheim chile. Let's see how it tastes, though. If you wanted some whipped up egg whites, you got the whipped up egg whites. <laughs> the relleno, the filling's a little bit all over the place, to be very honest. Yeah. Not to process there. Right, uh, chef, uh, tough decision. It's tied at 2-2. Red team, blue team, take your dishes back while Aron and I discuss. Thank you. Does the point go to the red or the blue team? Or does it remain a tie? I think it remains a tie. A tie. Wow. Absolutely. So we're tied at 2-2. How we break the tie is that we'll single out the best dish of the night. So I would like to see Adam's enchilada one more time, and I would like to see your taco red team. You got this. You got this. You know, any time that I can get praise from chefs that are the best in the world, I know that that's validation. Hopefully I can uh, get that W for the blue team. They'll definitely elevated authentic Mexican cuisine. Yeah, absolutely. Really makes me proud to know that there's chefs out there that take what I do and my family has done so seriously. Yeah. Adam, you okay, sir? Yeah. You yes, sure? Yeah. Yeah. Is this something Chef Adon said? He's yeah. happy, Chef. It's Tears good. of joy. It's good. Tears of joy, Chef. Where did you learn to cook like that? <laughs> Milwaukee. Milwaukee. <laughs> wow. <laughs> OK, the winning dish belongs to the red team or the blue team. I think, Adam, you should be crying tears of joy because this is the best dish of the night. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Amazing. Yeah, baby. Wow. Blue team, congratulations, Adam. Well done. Good to see you, my friend. Thanks for everything. Always a pleasure. Thank you, Take sir. Care. I'll see you soon.